So I want to start by introducing the idea of having a grid for your layout. Now, the grid is going to be created on a master page. Now, a master page is a page which all the other pages um, uh, take information from. So everything that I designed in the master page will be on the relevant pages which it is a master for. So, um, for instance, um, I've got my two pages here, which is my spread, pages three and f uh, two and three. Now, I can see that they're um, uh, coming from the master page A because they've got an A uh, in the top corner. If I was to create a few more pages, four, five, six, seven, you can see they've all got A on them. Now, to demonstrate this, I shall go into my master page. I'm going to double click on this uh, in this pages uh, palette. So yeah, once again, the pages palette, if, you, if that's not up there, you can find it in window pages. I'm going to go to that master A page and I'm just going to um, create a solid um, black uh, box. Now you'll notice that I've created that on, on the master page, but, and yet it's appeared on all the other pages. Um, now that's exactly how a master page should work. I can individually change, if I zoom out, you'll see all those pages. Okay, there you go. Now the beauty of that is if I create a grid um, by using a series of uh, guides, that they will, all those guides will be then placed on all the pages that um, that the master that they're linked to the master A page. <clears throat> and this is how we create a grid. So we create a grid in the master page, and then everything else um, follows, and it should become self-explanatory. So I'm just going to delete that um, that box. Oh, and when I delete that, you'll notice it disappears from all those other spreads. So I'm just going to zoom in a bit. Now, when I'm working, I like to see things in a kind of visual way. I like to kind of play around with uh, the layouts, um, uh, you know, in a kind of more visual way rather than um, sort of working from mathematics straight away. I just want to create something and just get a feel for it. So the way I do that is I'm going to create um, a frame. Um, could, you could create a box, but I'm going to create a frame. And I'm going to make this frame the same size as the safety area. So that's uh, denoted by this margin guide, which is this kind of pinky purple line. <clears throat> I'm going to fill that with black. So right now, um, yeah, I'm going to put the fill um, to black. So it creates a, a black box. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this down now because right now it, it's you know it's way too close to the edges and there's no room for any kind of information like page number or anything. And essentially this is going to represent the body of data which is on a body of information which is on my page, whether it be text or image. And this is what this black box represents, just to give me an idea of scale on the page. So I'm going to go to my black arrow. Now what I want to do is I want to scale this from the center because obviously I want it to scale from every edge. I don't want it to scale from one side or another. I don't want it to sort of scale from that side or from the from the top. I want it to scale from the center. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to get InDesign to help me. So I want it to scale from this center point. Um, and the way I do that is that if you'll notice up in this top left-hand corner, um, there's um, a series of little boxes which represent the anchor points on this object, and in this instance, it's a frame. So you'll notice that there's um, uh, top, top top corners, bottom corners, and middle sections, and they represent these boxes, so on and so forth. These anchor points. There's also one for the middle. Now, when I scale, I can scale by a number or percentage. And if I use these percentage tools, um, you'll notice that the anchor point is down. Let's let's make it into the bottom left-hand corner. If I go down to 50%, the box is going to scale towards that anchor point. Now, obviously, I don't want to scale from that anchor point. I want to scale from the middle. So I'm going to select the middle point, and I'm going to go down to 90%. Because I just feel like that we need a bit more breathing room around the edge of the page. Okay, so that's, that's looking all right. Um, we could maybe go down a little bit more. Um, okay, so that looks about good. Now you'll just notice that it's obviously because the page is not completely square, it's scaled down more from the top and bottom than the left and right. So I need to change this. I need to make these exactly the same. I need to make the, the edge of the of the page to where the information starts or the picture um, needs to be the same from uh, horizontal to vertical. So I'm going to select this box, um, this frame. 
and you'll notice that the x and y coordinates um, are represented up in this top corner. Now, right now, they're, they're the x and y coordinates of whichever anchor point I've selected, and right now we're selecting the middle. So I really want to select this anchor point, the top left-hand corner, so I'm going to swap change that. Now you'll notice that now the measurements have changed to um, you know just over 15 and a half millimeters, and the y is 18.88. So that represents the distance between there and there, and there and there. Now I need those to be the same. Now I don't want to change the left and rights because they're they're fine. I just want to change the vertical. So what I need to do is I need to take this 15.663, and I'm going to copy that Apple C. And I'm going to paste that into the Y. And I'm going to hit return. And you'll notice now the box has moved up. So from the top of the page to the top of the box, from the side of the box to the side of the page, is exactly the same measurement. They're both 15.663. And we can see that um, because it's in, in the uh, X, Y coordinates of this anchor point. <clears throat> OK, so that's looking good. But now you're going to say, OK, there's more room at the bottom. Well, that's all right, because we're going to put in uh, page information like uh, page numbers and stuff. So as a guide, this is kind of looking right. I mean, if I was to copy this box over here, I think it would be looking kind of about right. So now if I'm going to create uh, the grid of uh, eight boxes on a page, that's four down and two across, um, I need to make some guides to help me. So first, of all, I'm going to select this box. And first of all, I want to put a guide on this top um, where the box is. Now I could grab a guide, um, and I grab guides by clicking on the ruler and pulling out. Now if you can't see the ruler, you can go to view, um, and it should say show rulers, and that, that toggles them on and off. Um, and you use Apple R on the keyboard. You could also, um, yeah, as I say, just go up and find it in the menu. Okay, so to grab a ruler, um, uh, grab a guide, sorry, I'll just delete that one. You you click on the ruler and just pull out. <coughs> Now, I want it to go on top of that on top of that box. Now, um, I could just drop it on, like get it as roughly right and drop it on. But that's never I'm never going to be able to get that in the same place. It's really difficult to do that. So I'm just going to delete that. So we can use the x and y coordinates to help us by selecting a box and choosing any of the top row. Um, I get the exact addition of where the top of the box is there in the in the y coordinates. So I'm going to take that y coordinate. I'm going to create a guide, pull the guide out. I'm going to select the guide, and now I'm going to type in that measurement. So that's 15.663, and that's going to place that guide directly on that on that top of that box. So that's great. Um, I'm now going to do the same for the bottom. So um, I need to change my anchor point to the bottom, and it's changed to 225. 554. So I'm going to copy that, Apple C. I'm going to pull out another guide. I'm going to paste that in. And that's given me um, <clears throat> a guide at the bottom. So we're, right now we're, we're starting to uh, create this, um, this grid uh, out of guides. OK, so what we're going to attempt to do is divide this by four to give us the four shapes. Um, so we're going to have a box there, a box there, another one there, and another one there, and so on and so forth up this side to give us our eight boxes. Now, <clears throat> to help us out, um, it's best to now, once we've got the top and bottom, we're going to put the center point in. So I'm going to select my box again, and this time I want to choose uh, any of these middle um, uh, anchor points. So I'm going to choose the middle anchor point right directly in the middle. And this time we're going to take from the X box rather than the Y box because we're going horizontally. And I'm going to copy that measurement, and I'm going to pull a guide out from the side, and I'm going to select that guide. Oh, there you go. And I'm going to paste that number in. That's Apple V, and that's going to put um, a guide in the middle. Now, obviously, our images need to have a bit of a um, a margin or a gutter in between uh, those two, uh, the left side and the right side. So we need to um, put a guide either side of this to show where the images should and text should stop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, select that. Um, we've already got that number um, we just copied, so I can paste that in again. So I'm going to grab another guide, and I'm going to place in that number again, Apple V, which is paste. But I'm also going to increase that number by 3 millimeters. 
So instead of being 93, I'm going to put 96. And that's going to put in a second guide, um, the other side of the middle. I'm also going to do the the same for the the outside of that. Um, do another one, and uh, but this time I want to go. Uh, I want to take three away. So I'm going to do instead of doing 93, I'm going to do 90. Okay, so that's given us our centre point. <clears throat> so that's good. So we've got that. Um, I'm now because you kind of have to bear with me a little bit, but because I'm going to put text in, um, because text doesn't. Uh, fit squarely visually um, because you have uh, descenders like um, the letters P and Q you know how the little tail comes below the baseline um, so visually um, when I'm doing my measurements I want to disclude that from the information because visually it won't um, it won't look correct and it's, it's kind of hard to describe you have to kind of see it so if you just bear with us and I'm going to create um, a frame and I'm going to put in some text. <clears throat> so I'm just going to create this frame. Um, oh, maybe what I should do first is uh, I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to create another guide to make myself life easier. I'm going to select that box and I'm just going to put guide down the inside edge. So I'm going to select that inside uh, measurement and copy and paste that. Let's put one in. Oh, select it, paste it, there you go, okay. So now I'm going to create a frame, and hopefully that's going to snap to these guides, as it has, brilliant. And it's created a frame, I'm going to turn this into a text box, so I'm going to go to my text tool, and you'll note as I go over the uh, frame is going to the icon is going to change. Now I don't want to change the big box into a, into a text box. I'm, I'm, I want to do it to the small box. So I'm going to make sure I'm hovering over the small box. Okay, <clears throat> and I'm going to type in uh, this is my image. Yes, it is. Okay, so you obviously we can't see this text because it's black text on a black background. So um, <clears throat> I can move that text down, and there we go, we can see it. Now I don't want it to be quite as big as that. That's 12 points. So I'm going to drop the point size down to 10. Um, um, sorry, I can't. I'm obviously doing this off screen, but um, you could do it up here. So this was um, oh, that was 12 point. So up here I'm using. I can go down to 10 point. You notice the leading is at 12 point. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to select this, the the, uh, the big frame, um, which we converted into a black object. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap the color from the fill to the um, stroke. I'm going to do that now. And that's going to mean that the we can still see the box. It's still there, but I Visually, it's like kind of out of the way. I'm going to grab my text again, and I'm going to move my text up um, so that if I could zoom in a little bit as well. I'm using the arrow keys to move the text up. I want the bottom of the text to be bang on that guide. Now I can demonstrate the the uh, the senders. If I do a P or a Q or um, a G. They all go below that, and that's fine because um, I don't want to measure from the bottom of those descenders because visually, when you have a block of text, yeah, that they would almost disappear, um, and really your eyes only pick up the main body of text. So okay, so we've done that. Now I'm going to move in. I don't need this to be quite as big as it is. 